Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. I'm Andrew Hansen, alongside Omaha, Joe Stanton. And he's out in the Midwest, back from a trip to Chicago. And now we've got a really exciting situation here because we've got Thursday night football. And it's Brady and Antonio Brown back in the picture. They were huge for us over the weekend, Joe, on the main slate in week five. Now we've got them in prime time in week six. It's great. I was there for the winnings. I know everyone else in the Discord was as well. Um, great pairing there, and they just carved up Miami. Um, Brown for two touchdowns. You know, it was great. And then even going back to our Thursday night football game to kick off week five, um, Rams Seahawks. I know we had the same hybrid and that that cash and our GPPs snuck into the single entries as well. I overall it was a great week five, and uh, we're just going to continue doing it for week six. Yeah, well said. Definitely good. Good week in football. Really happy for our members. We had some takedowns with that FanDuel hybrid lineup. Uh, Deb, $400 winner. Um, so really, that's that's yeah. exciting for us. It motivates us to, to, to run it back here and do it again. And it's fun because we get all these primetime games, and we get to zero in on the matchup and watch tape and break it down. I, I just love it. Um, and then, you know, what a great storyline here with Tom Brady facing off against the Eagles and – the Tampa run defense against the mobile quarterback Jalen Hurts. What do you think about this game in general with these quarterbacks? What a what a fun dynamic. It's interesting. I mean, you got the Buccaneers as the number one run defense and the last pass defense, um, which is not on par with where they were at last year. Um, and of course, I mean, Hurts loves to run the ball. He's actually been throwing decent as well. Um, but this matchup is really interesting. I mean, it's a short week for both teams. Tom Brady, though, I know this means a little more to him. Um, I, Andrew, I know you're out there in the Northeast, so I know you're familiar with Tom. I'm a Broncos fan, so I never really liked him. But a um, couple documentaries, he's mentioned that the New York Giants game earlier in his career and that last Super Bowl 52 that lost to the Eagles, you know, Nick Foles, um, it haunts him. He, he it keeps him up at night. Um, he actually even mentioned it in his postgame interview uh, when he was at Foxborough just this season. He mentioned his drop pass in the Eagles um, Super Bowl game. I know this is going to matter a little bit to him. Obviously, every game is going to matter to Tom Brady at this point. I mean, the man is unreal. Um, but I definitely I definitely know he's not sleeping on this game because it definitely means something to him. Absolutely. I, I like it. That's a great point. And Tampa, they are seven-point favorites here, even though they are on the road in Philly. Over under here, 52-and-a-half. We just double-checked the weather. It's looking good. It's supposed to be about 72 and cloudy. At in the northeast time. yeah it, not yeah it's kind of warm up here right now so good passing conditions for for tom so let's let's break down that side of things first they are are coming off that huge win against miami uh, as we've referenced where tom just kind of went nuts and in this one he, you know he does have a bit of a thumb issue on his throwing hand and you know he apparently he's claiming that he's going to be fine so assuming he's good to go um, let's start with, you know, his, his targets here. And, you know, I, I like Brown here again, but I also like Godwin. And what I, what I also like is those two in comparison to Mike Evans. I think he's going to see a lot of Darius Slay. Uh, so I like Brown and Godwin here. It's similar price range, kind of a tough call for me if I had to pick one. Uh, I, I'm going to keep playing with that. I may build some lineups with, with both of them, but I also like the Ted end situation. So, um, you know, if you look at what Philly has given up here over the season, the sixth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers, but we saw Tyreek Hill just go nuts against them. 11 for 186 right. and three. And, you know, he, he runs out of the slot a lot, but he also runs deep. And I, I, I view Brown as a little bit more of a deep threat than Godwin. You know, sometimes Godwin does get the, the deep targets, but he's really more short and intermediate. Uh, so, you know, I think it's hard to predict who might get the deep touchdown if there is one. I do think it'll be one of those guys, not Evans. Um, so, so that's where I'm kind of starting with. What are your thoughts on the, the three key receivers for, the, for Tampa? Sure. Yeah, Andrew, we're rowing the same boat. Um, I definitely like Godwin and Brown more than I like Mike Evans in this one. Um, and, and for the same reasons you mentioned, um, I actually do like Godwin a lot out of the slot. Um, I like Brown for the deep ball. 
if I did have to choose one, um, I like both, like I said, but I, I do like Chris Godwin. I think he has a great matchup against Maddox in the slot. Like you said, Tyreek Hill had that big three touchdown game running from the slot um, on deep balls, but that's where he was positioning. And, you know, Godwin does like to run a lot of the slant routes. Um, he's tied for the second, mo- or he's tied for the most target shares on the team. Uh, 20%. He's sharing that with Mike Evans. And he actually leads the team in red zone targets um, with 11 compared to a Mike Evans seven. And I think Brown is right there at third. Um, so yeah, I like Brown for the deep ball advantage because I think they can beat them in the deep ball area for the Eagles. Um, but I think for pure volume here um, and where he's lining up, I do like Chris Godwin. Um, of course, he didn't get into the end zone last uh, last week. Antonio Brown did. He had the um, seven receptions, 124 yards, two touchdowns. Um, so Brown is coming off of really good chemistry uh, with Tom Brady as well. So I like both. I think I do give the edge to Godwin. Um, but both are absolutely playable, and I think they're my favorite matchups here. Um, as far as the tight end goes um, for the Tampa Bay, I agree. I, I like the matchup here. They have a really good um, matchup against these Philadelphia linebackers. You know, between Bray and Howard, uh, it was kind of a toss-up there when Rob Gronkowski went out. Um, and Andrew, I don't know if you remember from the first podcast we did, I mentioned that I really liked O.J. Howard yes, I do. In, that, in that first Thursday night football game, um, and maybe it's his time. Um, if you had to decide between the two, um, where are you learning? Where are you leaning? You know, I actually am leaning towards Howard this week, in part because he's a lot cheaper on, on DraftKings. He's only 1400 which is really attractive to me as a low-owned potential captain because it is such a good matchup. You look at what Dallas, or Dalton Schultz did, from Dallas against them, six for 80 and two scores. The Carolina tight ends last week, six for 52 and a score. Ian Thomas uh, looked wide open to me on his seam routes. Mm-hmm. And O.J. Howard was running more routes last week against Miami than he has earlier in the season. I think Tampa might be looking at Brait, you know, in the doghouse just a little bit after he got six targets against New England, only, only, uh, Caught a couple balls, had a big drop. Uh, he, so he went from six targets against New England down to one against Miami, whereas O.J. Howard got three targets, his most on the season, a couple of catches. But it also just, you know, he had, a, he had a target on the first drive. He was out there early and often. He just seemed like he was the guy. So does that, sure. does that hold true here for the second week in a row? Like you mentioned, it is a short week, and things can flip sometimes. But I, I'm leaning towards Howard with some price savings. Yeah, well, well, let's not forget, just overall in the tight end matchup, Rob, Gronk- Rob Gronkowski started off the season with two touchdowns in week one and week two. Um, so they, Tom definitely likes finding his tight end. And um, I agree with you. Looking at the Miami game last last weekend, um, looked like Howard was a little more active in the passing game, uh, whereas Brait was – I mean, he did get that one reception, but he was, he was really out there. And he did – you're right, he did look like he was all in the doghouse. Um, so yeah, overall, I think I agree with you there on Howard. Um, I like the Godwin Brown matchups. Um, I think Evans might be a little too high for new, for me to pay up for. Um, there was a little rumors at the start of the week that Godwin, he was limited in the Monday practice. Maybe if he doesn't go, Tyler Johnson steps up because actually Tyler Johnson did play pretty well when Antonio Brown was out on COVID. Um, you know, he, he had some, I think he had a three reception, 63 yard game, but yeah, in this case, I think I would be going out with, without Tyler Johnson. Of course, because all three of those guys are healthy. Um, actually, as much as I love the passing game for Tampa Bay, I also love the running game, um, specifically Leonard Fournette. Um, and he has been looking really good. He's out there for 64% of the snaps. He's getting rushing and receiving work. Um, I mean, last week against the Eagles, um, rookie Hubbard rushed for 100 yards uh, against against the Eagles defense. So I, I look to the running backs on Tampa Bay as well. Maybe in a short week, they do – run it a little more. Um, I guess Fournette and Bernard are back there. I do like Fournette more. Um, I'm not going to go to Ronald Jones. Um, Andrew, Andrew, what do you think about this run defense? Or sorry, this run offense uh, for the Tampa? Yeah, I mean, I like the the Tampa run offense against this Philly run defense. The, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, Pro Football Focus has ranked all the offensive lines, and Tampa right now ranked number three. And Philly has given up 142 rushing yards per game. That's 30th in the league. The last three week, three weeks, they've been bad. Uh, they've been carved up. And like you said, Juba Hubbard, over 100 yards. And just watching the tape, there were some big holes he was running through. Yep. Um, 
you know, I think he's a little quicker getting to the hole than Fournette, but Fournette is powerful as well. Um, and he's clearly the lead guy over Ronald Jones. Jones definitely just the change of pace guy. So I like Fournette. Uh, I would like to have him in most of my lineups. He's also catching more passes this year. Mm-hmm. Looked good catching the catching the ball last week. But we do have Gio, Giovanni Bernard, and he had a couple games back, a big day receiving. Had two catches last week, but got in the end zone. Um, and, you know, Hubbard was good catching the ball against Philly too. So, you know, I think Brady will check it down. It could end up being a week, Joe, where I, I combine Brady with Fournette and and Howard and just fade the wide receivers in certain lineups because uh, I, I think the short passing game would work pretty well against these guys. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Bernard taking – he definitely cuts into the passing game for Fournette, um, but I don't think as much as we anticipated at the start of the season because um, Fournette has been getting looks. Um, and a decent amount of them. Um, so, yeah, I think it is a concern, um, but I think with the upside that you have for Fournette on the ground and he's still getting that passing work, um, I would definitely go there. But, um, you know, for a value cost saving, Bernard is definitely not an option to slump at. I mean, it's the seventh best for PFF, um, the seventh best o- uh, offensive line versus defensive line matchup here um, just overall in week six. Um, so from a running perspective, yeah, I think both are viable. Um, I do like Fournette in this one as well. So, Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, before you break down the Eagles for us, do you want to tell uh, folks how they can come in and join us as we as we get real hot here with our NFL lineups? Do I? Would love to. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so we're getting great people coming in. I think we had a bunch of people come in for week five and enjoy those winnings there. A couple pass returning um, members coming through, which is great to have. Um, it's a three-day pass if you want to try us out. Um, it's ten dollars. You can find all these memberships options at dfscoachdoc.com. Um, but you get all sports when you join our Discord. You get NBA, NBA. We're giving out lines for the preseason, and that's just around the corner. Um, NFL, MLB is obviously ending with the postseason, but still some great lineups from Crash um, and everyone else. And then of course the the tail end of PGA. Um, you can also do a five-day pass just to get the NFL Thursday through Monday Night Football. All of that's at DFSCoachTalk.com. Um, in that membership, we give out full fan duel lineups, uh, DraftKings clipboard. If you play on Yahoo, uh, we get, give out a couple Yahoo lineups. And then uh, the best part is you just get to be a part of our great community. You get to chat with us all the time. Um, you know, we have various amount of sports fans in here. Um I know we had a little banter between some Bengals and Packers fans and <laughs> Braves and Brewers the other time. So it's just a great community and, you know, we'd love to have you join. Yeah. Well said. And the, the, the full lineups are great, you know, and we can't forget about Yahoo. We were one reception away from a takedown in mm. the game on Monday night. Um, so yeah, we're right on the verge of, of hitting another big one. So let's get, let's continue to get after it here on this one. Talk to me about these Eagles. Gotta start with Jalen Hurts. He makes up 87% of the Eagles' total yards this season. He is Insane. the bulk of the offense, um, and he's just a threat to make plays on with his legs and his arms. Um, he's thrown seven passing touchdowns so far this season um, and three rushing touchdowns. Um, he's had, I think he carries in his rushing about um, six yards per carry. Um, he's just in a great matchup here. Um, he's actually tied for the most red zone rushes on the Eagles team. Um, with six, he's just – without Levante David for the Buccaneers, um, I think it does open up the gap for his running a little bit. Obviously, that's what we were a little concerned about, a mobile, mobile quarterback against a strong rush defense. Um, but he's been throwing it really well, as, uh, well, too. And I think, to me, just from the eye test, I really like Jalen Hurts. Um, and if I'm going to begin to both pieces of the game, I want to get to the piece that's going to be the biggest part of – just the total offense. I mean, I guess the Chiefs, I think he accounted, um, or I know, he accounted for 434 yards of the 462 total yards in that game versus the Chiefs. I mean, just an unreal amount of share on this offense. I would love to have Jalen Hurts in my lineup here just purely for that number alone. That's a great stat. You don't ever see that, really. Right. Uh, I mean, Lamar Jackson uh, can have games like that as well, but – in an overall tough matchup, uh, you know, he's the, he's the guy that's going to get him as far as they're going to go. 
Sure. With, with all those carries, and obviously he's throwing it. So, yep. Uh, really good point. It's a, it'd be really hard to fade him in this one. Yeah, I, uh, and that's kind of where I'm at here. I would love to pair Brady and Hurts here. Maybe for a GPP, I do just go Jalen Hurts and, and put my faith in the Eagles. I know our Coach Talk team member Brett would enjoy that. Yes, um, <laughs> but speaking on some of these pass catches for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, you got Devontae Smith, you got Jalen Rager, you got Watkins um, as well. I, I like Devontae Smith, I think, the best here. Um, he has a 23% target share this season. He only has one touchdown. However, um, if you have been flying the Eagles, he's had a lot called back on him. He's had some holding calls, um, some offsides, some just a toe, a toe out of bounds. Um, so he really could be having three touchdowns or four touchdowns on the season. Um, he's going to be lining up um, wide against Richard Sherman and Dean. Um, Richard Sherman, of course, doesn't look like his doesn't look like his Pro Bowl self um, anymore. And the Buccaneers sign him because they're hurting in the secondary. He actually said after that last game that he, in the fourth quarter his legs felt like Jello, um, and he's just getting accustomed with the Buccaneers defense. So I, I think where Devontae Smith stands, I think he's due for some breakout here. Um, and with we're going to be targeting the passing attack um, for these Buccaneers. I like Devontae Smith. Um, and then I'd probably say between Rager and Watkins, and Andrew, I'd love to hear input here, but Watkins for me is probably the GPP play. Um, he had a big 53-yard gain against Carolina to set up that first score in the game. Um, I mean, other than that, he wasn't much of a contributor, but I can't say the same for Rager. Um, they're shorting, they're sporting the same target share, Um Rager dropped his first pass of the game and had a big holding call as well in that last game. So neither neither receiver really stood out. Um, but I think from a GPP, GPP perspective, and if you're going for the long ball, um, I'd lean Watkins. Um, and that's probably where I'm thinking for the Philadelphia wide receivers here. Yeah, I mean, I think Smith is the, the big play guy. He's going to get the most targets. Uh, so he's got the the biggest upside. He's obviously the most expensive, so that's the trade off. Sure, but I agree. Sherman is just not quite at one hundred percent. Watkins, you know, running seventy three percent of his routes out of the slot, and this is what I've tried to target against Tampa uh, this year and had some success with it. Um, and it it's funny how these receivers as a whole have what you think is a good matchup because Tampa has been bad against the pass. But if you look at the grading system with PFF, all of these guys have terrible grades, 25.4 yeah. for Watkins. That's the highest of the three. And if you're not familiar with the PFF scoring system, rating system, if you're under 50, it's below average. So to have a, you know, quote unquote, great matchup against this pass defense that gives up a lot of yardage, but to have these terrible grades, it to me it just it's a reminder that they're not a big pass heavy offense, and these guys don't yeah. have many stats yet. So uh, it's just a it's a interesting dynamic. I, I but I agree, Smith. I would project to have the most fantasy points. I would go Watkins number two, and so it depends on are you on DraftKings or FanDuel. I, Watkins a little sure. more attractive to me on DraftKings with with PPR. So I could see myself going with one of those guys and and uh, hooking them up with Hertz, but I also like the tight end situation. Yeah, absolutely. I was just about to just about to get there. I mean, I like Hertz a lot with Goddard be, Goddard being out for COVID. I mean, I, actually, on the season, Hertz already has the higher target share among the two. He he has a higher target share than Goddard. Actually, Goddard has the most red zone. Targets among the whole Philadelphia team with eight, but Ertz is right there with six. He's in, he's tied for second. So, to me, I think this is a fantastic matchup for the tight end position for, for the Eagles with Goddard being out. That usage is just going to go to Ertz. He had a um, six for sixty six receptions for sixty yards game against the Chiefs. Uh, he went four uh, receptions for fifty three with a touchdown against the Cowboys. Um, I think Ertz is in a fantastic position here, and it, it is even a boost with Goddard being out. Yeah. I mean, awesome spot. Um, and for the season, Tampa Bay has given up the ninth most fantasy points to tight ends right from the beginning of the season. Dallas, those guys combined nine for 65 Higby had five catches and a touchdown. 
remember the New England guys with all those short passes had seven for 46 and two scores. The Miami tight ends had six catches last week. So uh, Ertz, you know, prime spot. I think he'll probably be pretty chalky, but Mm -hmm. I I do want to invest in him quite a bit. Yeah, he might be my favorite receiver for the Eagles. I mean, him, Devontae Smith, but, I mean, just from a cost perspective, I think Ertz is going to get targeted in the red zone. So, I mean, if you're having Jalen Hurts and Zach Ertz in your lineup uh, for the Eagles side, I think that's a great duo. I I really like that going into this, um, you know, and then it's kind of just your preference on, you know, between your lineup, you know, which side are you going to be favoring a little bit more for some of those points. But, yeah, I really like Zach Ertz. I think the only other guy we talked about – we hadn't talked about in Philadelphia – was Greg Ward uh, rounding out the locker room, but um, Andrew, I'm not on him. So I think that really rounds it all up. I think Andrew, it sounds like we're pretty aligned with everything. Yeah. It hurts to Ertz. Love that combo. <laughs> fun, yep. fun stat, f- stat of the week here. Uh, Greg Ward, two receptions on the season, two touchdowns. So hey, you know, he, you know he can be a slate breaker sure. uh, on a one game showdown with his low price, but we do. I, we we should finish up with these Philly running backs, right? Oh, um, of, course. of course. Because I mean, we know Hertz is basically the entire offense. He, he but, is the running back. <laughs> you know, if Sanders gets like five carries, maybe Gainwell gets a couple touches. What What do you think about those guys, Andrew? I'm so, I'm so glad you kept me in check there. I know in the comments they'd be like, "Dude, what are you what are you, what are you talking about?" <laughs> Um, well, yeah, if you're but, ever going to skip a running back group, it might you might want to have it be this one, right? Maybe that's maybe that's kind of a sign with where with where I'm thinking here. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Sanders is talented as heck as as a running back, but I mean, he, there's no offensive game plan for him in the past three games. He's had uh, one attempt running, seven attempts running, and two attempts running. Just nothing there. Um, and he's put on a brave face with the media. He said, "I'm just learning." The offense a little bit more. It's obviously different from last season. But Gainwell um, is actually getting the majority of the red zone rushes and looks um, in the air this season. He's actually had 23 targets thrown his way. Six of them were in the red zone. Um, he's also had 21 rushes on the season with three of those being in the red zone for two touchdowns. So it actually seems like Gainwell is getting a majority of the work here compared to Sanders um, and is playing a little bit better behind Hertz and is a little more involved in the passing game. Um, as well, specifically uh, with this target share, he's he's um, supporting as a pass catcher. So between the two running backs, I think I would go with Gainwell. Um, it is not my priority to get to the running backs here for Philadelphia, but if you do, um, I think that makes for a strong GPP and leverage play um, between the two. I would obviously go Gainwell, but um, yeah, I think for GPP, it's great. I don't think it's a priority for me though. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the pass catching because in terms of running it, again, this is the number one rush defense in the NFL, they only give up 45 yards rushing per game. It's crazy. That's insane. So yep. with the amount of carries you just referenced, I just don't expect much from Sanders on the ground. But they they were targeting him uh, early and often on these short passes uh, out in the flat. Um, so that would be the way that he could do some damage. Because we saw what Miami did to Tampa. In in Miles Gaskin, ten sure. catches, seventy four yards, two two touchdowns. Um, you know, I don't see these guys doing quite that well. Um, you know, Gaskin is explosive, and they finally yeah you know, put it together with him. Um, and and you know he one of his touchdowns was a wheel, a wheel route, so it was much more of a downfield play. That's not what they've been doing with Sanders. Gainwell sometimes will line up on the outside and get downfield a little bit. So I agree. He, you know, he's got some decent upside as a pass catcher with the with the price savings. Yeah, maybe Gainwell's a Gainwell's a good like big GPP play. Or if you are doing a small single entry, you know, that's your edge there. Because yeah, like you said, he definitely can get the work in the passing game. I, I think it's funny that you mentioned the Dolphins, and I think it's a great point. But all the Dolphins were without Fuller, Parker last week, um, and of course they have they no longer have Tua at the helm. Um, you know, uh, what is it, Brissett? Percent, yeah. Yeah, he's not the Jalen Hurts running type. <laughs> right. Or or not that I've seen. So I think they kind of had to go to Gaskin a little bit. Um, or that was like kind of the priority game plan, but it worked. So, you know, you got to take that into account with here with Gainwell. But I mean, with you know, the other pass catchers, I think it's definitely a leg up from Miami. So I think they will go there. Um, but yeah, that's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny because the the Miami wide receivers, they kind of remind me of Philly with some of these, you know, younger players who haven't done much, a lot of short passes. And I think Philly may follow the same game plan in terms of the most success we're going to have is throwing it to Ertz and checking right. it down to the running backs because that's yep. what Tampa is going to give us. You know, we're not going to run it up their throats. Um, so it, you know, may not be really what they want to do, but it may be their best way to slowly move the ball down the field and keep the ball out of Brady's hands. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Andrew. I'll mention this. It's a little off topic here, but I wish Will Fuller was healthier this season. Mm. It just real quick side comment, but he had a great year for the Texans, him and cooks. Um, and then now he's over in Miami and he's just, I mean, he's a talented receiver, kind of like Miles Sanders, just as talented, just in a bad, bad script here. Yeah. I mean, great GPP play, you know, a yeah. couple weeks every season where he smashes, right. It seems like he's got some issues. Can't get it together. Hopefully he can and, and stay healthy. Um, on, you know, as we wrap up here, really appreciate it. Folks will just hit the thumbs up on the way out, subscribe to the channel Hit the alert button because we've got some more NFL podcasts coming this weekend for the main slate and the other primetime games, Sunday and Monday. Oh, by the way, we did a golf podcast today, and we've got MLB podcasts going for the playoffs. And you mentioned that five-day pass, Joe. If folks jump in with it right now, you know where that's going to take them to? (laughs) Through the Monday Night Football on the eve of the NBA regular season tip-off next Tuesday. So come in, check us out, and then you can pick up the NBA season package once you see – how fun it is. This is the stars aligning time of mm-hmm. the year. I mean, this yes. week is just going to be sports nonstop, Andrew. I've cleared my calendar. And like you said, this is the perfect time to come in because like, like we said, you get all sports, but not all sports are always going to be going on. This is the time. This is, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. Sports galore. On the way right. out, Joe, kickers, we've got <laughs> kickers. Did you see that Elliot kicked a 58 yard field goal last week for Philly? Um, by the way, uh, our man, John Wehausen was in attendance for that. So I, now I'm sure? officially the, the only person on the NFL squad here who hasn't attended an NFL game this year. Um, suck up had a 60 yarder that went off the sort of, you know, the uprights. Um, and so I would lean suck up here just because of the volume. I, I do think Tampa is going to win. Uh, so I give them more scoring opportunities, um, he, both yep. reasonable prices. Love talking kickers with you, Andrew. I, I also, I also like suck up every um, Wednesday. In this one, yeah, it's my. It's I hope people stick around to that because that's this the best knowledge we're giving out here. Um, Game changer. <laughs> I like suck up as well in this one. I think it's a, if you had to play kicker, I'd go in. Beautiful. All right, well, we hope that it helped everybody get ready, uh, start to build. If you want the final lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo, jump in with us at dfscoachtalk.com. We will send you an email and invite you into our discord. We give out the lineups about 45 minutes before kickoff and the uh, core plays for DraftKings as well. So that will do it. Excellent work, Mr. Stanton on behalf of the entire team. I am Andrew Hansen. We will see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.